Hey everyone, I'm Dan. I'm Elisa. And this is JRPG Life. And today we're going to talk about Switch games. Obviously, we play a lot of Nintendo Switch. Who doesn't? It's one of the best selling consoles ever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we want to talk about some of our personal favorites. Obviously, we play some of the mainstream games like Animal Crossing. Mario Kart, you know, Pokemon. Zelda, Pokemon, right? <laughs> we want to talk about some of the other ones that we love that we think more people should be playing. And uh, so uh, here's a handful, and hopefully you'll enjoy. Do you want to start? So this is my first favorite. It's Collection of Mana. Nice. It has three games on it. We have the Final Fantasy Adventure for Game Boy, which is the first Secret of Mana, and then Secret of Mana, which is uh, was released on Super Nintendo. One of my personal favorites, um, I played this three player with my uh, two of my brothers growing up and it was awesome. So I was excited to replay this on Switch. And then lastly, <laughs> 25 years in the making, uh, well, not in the making, but to be translated to English in the United States is uh, Seeking Zetsu 3, which they've decided to call Trials of Mana in the U.S. And um, this this was a long time coming for me. I've played um, some emulator games of it, but never had a chance to really finish it. And so once this collection came out, I completed Trials of Mana, um, my first playthrough. I will do another playthrough in the future. But, um, I, you know, there, there are so many great, great games already on here that, um, you know, I, I could get a lot of value out of this one. Yeah, that's awesome. You can't complain getting three classic RPGs in one Switch collection. That's, they keep, they need to keep doing this. They just need to keep doing it. Awesome. So my first is, it's not really a game that a lot of people don't know about, but it's one of my uh, personal favorites. I'm still playing this game, even though I've put a ton of hours into it. Dragon Quest Builders 2. So, I'm not a big Dragon Quest fan, but I love Dragon Quest Builders. It ends up being, this is probably one of my favorite games of all time. The combat is meh, the story is meh, the gameplay and the building and the crafting and the the exploration is second to none. And, you know, I beat it, what was it, like 40 hours in, and I've put over 150 hours into it just because I want to keep completing all the, the Builderpedia, you know, the recipes. And, you know, it's a very, very simple concept. Dragon Quest, Quest Builders 1 was also incredible, but 2 stands out as uh, being just, uh, I'm sure you all that have played it can understand why. It's Minecraft meets RPG. And I, I'm not a Minecraft fan either, but this game is phenomenal. Why do you like this one better than uh, the first Builders? Obviously, they, they added a lot of creature features. The the way that the, the hammer and ammo and items work is better and cleaner. Um, and then there's a couple more, you know, creature features and with regards to what you can build and how you build them in exploration. But I really do like the first one still. And I still go back to play it because I like it almost as much. It's real close. Cool. Yep, so that's, that's my first one. Alright, my second favorite is Dragon Quest XI Definitive Edition. You put a lot of time into this one. This, this game took most of my year to complete. Um, I spent 220 hours to complete it. Now, I did not platinum it, even though there's no platinum, but um, you basically... You can beat the game, and then to like really beat the game, it's it's another I want to say 100 hours, which Man. which is why it took 220 hours to to like fully complete the game. Um, it's it's beautiful, um, you know. It has all the the new RPG creature features. Like you get a horse right away, so you can That's just incredible. run around. Like you can. You get teleportation pretty pretty early on, which is nice. Um, you can just um, ram uh, monsters when you know they're they're weaker than you, so you can level grind that way. So it's pretty neat. It's a beautiful game, great music. Um, There's an 8-bit mode too, which is kind of nice too. Yeah, so you can replay this whole game and start over from the beginning in 8-bit mode. It's incredible. Even the music you can change to 8-bit mode too, if you want. 
I want that in every modern RPG. Agreed. <laughs> so uh, next up, this is this is kind of funny because it came as a surprise. I've always loved golf games, but this game uh, is in my top five all time, and uh, it's Golf Story. I've played a lot of golf games. I've played a lot of arcade style golf games. I love the Hot Shots Golf series and those kind, but this game blew me away. It's an RPG about a kid just trying to make it in life and suddenly he suddenly wants to become a good golfer too. And it's witty. The uh, Basically the combat is your is golf and the golf mechanics are perfect. Although I will say, if you haven't played this game and you want to play it, you need to play it on the light or in handheld mode in my opinion. When you use even a, if you use a pro controller, there is a little bit of delay just due to the connection or something. So, you know, trying to time that perfect shot, it is a little different. And those of you who've played it and tried it might understand that as well. But easily one of the best random RPGs they've ever come out with on uh, on the Switch or any system as far as I'm concerned. Great game. Play it. Uh, so my third favorite game, I don't believe there's a physical copy of the collection, but it's um, the collection of Final Fantasy Legend games. Um, so it's available on digital right now. This is the physical copy of the original game on Game Boy. And I just about completed it. It's not a very long game. Probably, maybe if you take your time, like I have like 25 hours. I'm like just before the last boss on this one. Um, I've always wanted to play through the Final Fantasy Legend games. Um, they were a little too challenging for me when they, they came out. But uh, playing them on Switch, there are a lot of nice upgrades made to the original game and um, just a little bit easier to play in this day and age. Absolutely. So my next choice, uh, my third choice, is kind of one that I think enough people don't talk about and uh, it is pinball. Star Wars pinball specifically is, is one of the better ones and uh, pinball on the Switch is really cool because it has this wonderful feature of the flip grip. So the flip grip, uh, I'm not sure, I don't remember their website off the top of my head, but if you search switch flip grip, you'll be able to find it. This is probably one of the best ways I've ever experienced a pinball game. Uh, on the switch, being able to play it vertically is just unreal. Um, you Obviously this is the Star Wars one, so with the Star Wars one you get uh, an assortment of tables, you get all the, the things that you're used to from Star Wars, you know, you get special character tables, you get bonuses, and it's all about high score play. But you want to sit down and just do some mindless gaming, pinball, all day long, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to do it. Oh. So we want to, we'll talk about a couple honorable mentions. Yeah. Um, so honorable mention for me is going to be Neo Kuni, the very first one. Mm -hmm. Um I recently beat the PS3 version of this, and it took me years to complete. Not because it was difficult, just uh, sorting out time to play it. I tend to have more time to play a portable game than I do on a console. Um, but this is a direct port of the PlayStation 3 game, so that's why this is going to be my honorable mention. If I didn't play it like so recently, I'd play through it again, but we have quite the back catalog that I need to yes. get through before I do a replay of this one. But I absolutely love this game. It's fantastic. And what about the second one? Have you played the second one yet? Uh, I have not played the second one. I don't think they made a port to the PlayStation, or sorry, to the, the Switch yet. If they port it to Switch, um, I will most likely play it much sooner than later. Nice. So an honorable mention for me is one that uh, kind of came out of nowhere. And Limited Run made a, made a release of it, and it is Saturday Morning RPG. So this game is kind of cool because you, you can play through it in multiple different ways, um, but it's a very, very short RPG. So I think we beat it the first time in like... 20 hours? Oh, I think it was last. I think it was like 15. 15? Yeah, it was yeah. real short. Which is fun for an adult with a you know, busy life. Um, but, you know... It's Transformers. Transformers. G.I. Yep. Joe. That's right, yep. So, um, recommend it. Uh, you, 
I think it's hard to get the physical edition nowadays, but you can download it. The game itself for probably under 10 bucks under any sale. So yeah. I definitely recommend it. And, and it's Golden Week right now, so I believe there's some sales on the, the eShop, mm -hmm. which is my favorite game of all time. The eShop is her favorite game. Yes, <laughs> I'm saying that again. When I say, what are you playing? She says, my favorite game of all time. I said, oh, the eShop? Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> that goes for the 3DS or the Nintendo Switch. Or the Vita. Or the Vita. We do have one game series that we would call a couple experience that we play pretty regularly, especially if we have like, if we're out with family or if we have some friends over, is uh, Overcooked. Boy, these are fun. Yeah, if you can play this four player co-op with family, friends. Family that you get along with, because yeah. you might not after a little while playing this game. True. Um, we, uh, The two of us can do pretty well together on most of the levels, but when you get into the bigger levels, you need more people to like truly three star them in yeah. order to continue on in the game. It gets frantic and crazy and it is a great time if you're going home to see the family for the holidays. That's what we do usually in the in the Christmas season. Uh, we'll bring that and the, her, I and her two brothers will play that for hours and just go crazy. It's super fun, so even, highly recommend it. Even uh, my dad will hop in and play. Yep, exactly. Even parents understand. All you gotta do is two buttons and move around. Yep. That's it. You got you got your dash and you got your pick up and put down your action button and that's, that's pretty much it. Absolutely. So, um, what are you gonna play next? So, I, I have two that are front of the line. Um, so right now I'm I'm in the the long haul for Persona 5 Royale. I'm pretty close to beating it. I think I'm 140 hours in and I believe I've got maybe two or three more bosses and that's it. Um, I will probably platinum the game, but no promises. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I beat that on PlayStation 4, there's Persona 5 Strikers, which my understanding is this is kind of a dynasty warrior set in the yeah. Persona world, and it's supposed to pick up right after your last semester in Persona 5 Standard Edition, not Royale. And, but I had also put in a, um, a good chunk of time on Tokyo Mirage, uh, FE Encore, and if you don't know, FE means um, Fire Emblem. It's a crossover game between Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem and Persona. And Persona. Crazy. So uh, the battle style is very, very similar to Persona 4 Golden slash Persona 5, but it's all about um, you're fighting as like a, a pop star, basically, and you're doing dance moves as like um, combat and it's very bright and colorful and upbeat and I am just all about it. It takes place in Japan so that's fun. So um, there are two games I'm going to play next. One of them for sure right after currently I'm knee deep in uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. It's quickly becoming one of my favorite games. Of all, it, it's incredible. It's just so good in every single way and it's witty and it's fun and I, I love it. Uh, but when that's done Definitely gonna jump into Cotton. This one we recently got from Play Asia and Play Asia, and it is obviously just an old style cut 'em up, and it's been re-released on Switch. And they actually just released Cotton 2 on Play Asia, so I gotta get with it because they're starting to release these fast. Um, and then the other one is definitely gonna be Mario Golf. Uh, that's not out till June, so when that's out, uh, that's gonna suck up my life. It's gonna be great. Uh, I wanted to mention. Uh an indie game that um, I don't believe there's a physical copy. We played this one together. Yeah, uh, so it's called Gato Roboto. So if you haven't heard of it, it's a platformer. I, I downloaded it because it was starring a cat in a Metroid-like suit. And what else do you need? It's a Metroidvania game and it's just black and white color. And I, I played a bit into it and I got stuck pretty bad around the the second boss, so I asked Daniel to help me um, to complete it, and he ran the rest of the way through, and it was a great time together. It's got a cute little sh story. It's not a, a deep story, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's. I would compare it similar to a lot of your 2D platformers nowadays. It does have some challenging parts, but it's not like Celeste challenging. It's not. It's not 
super technical. I think it's only like a nine hour playthrough. Yeah. Um, but it's fun and it's a great pick me up and play. Um, I think it was like three dollars on sale. So yeah. if you got a couple bucks to spend, and you like Metroid Vania games and you like cats, it's perfect. Yep, exactly. <laughs> So, um, yeah, those are some of our favorite Switch games, and uh, if you uh, have some favorites that we didn't mention, comment below. Obviously, these are just our opinions. If you disagree, comment below. Uh, we'd love to hear what you played that we might not have. Uh, we might even have it, and we haven't even opened it yet, so yeah. <laughs> if you give us a good excuse to pop something else open, because we game jump a lot, just like probably a lot of other people. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, give us some feedback on that. Uh, if you like what we said, make sure you thumbs up and uh, give us a subscribe. We're approaching 150, which is kind of cool. That's another round number that we didn't ever think we'd see, much less have a YouTube channel, and now we're almost at 150, so yeah. it's pretty exciting. And then, uh, thank you again for watching. So remember, when you both have your favorite games and you're playing them together or separate, either way, in the end, the couple that plays together stays, stays together. together. See you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>